In this screencast, I will take a look at the Solus Messaging Appliance and its support for virtual message brokers. First, I'll quickly introduce virtualization, then I'll outline the virtualization capabilities of the Solus Messaging Appliance, and then we'll switch over to a live demo of virtual message brokers using Solus. So what is virtualization? Virtualization allows the sharing of physical hardware among multiple users or applications by creating virtual versions of this hardware. Some examples of this would be virtualization of servers through virtual machines, as depicted in the graphic, virtualization of networks through VLANs and more recently through software-defined networking, and virtualization of storage through LUNs. Virtualization is also a key component in enabling cloud. So how does this apply to Solus? Solus appliances support a concept of virtual message brokers. These virtual message brokers are fully functioning message brokers allowing many applications to share a single Solus appliance. Each message broker is configured with its own constraints and resources, which keeps them independent. And virtual message brokers can be configured for different performance characteristics and resource utilization, as indicated in the figure, by the different sizes. Rolling out a new message broker is very easy. You simply configure the virtual message broker on the Solus appliance, and the Solus appliance takes care of synchronizing this configuration to the hot standby appliance, and replicating the configuration to the DR location. As you'll see, it only takes a couple of minutes to roll out a new virtual message broker. The best way to look at this is to think of two typical admin users, the global admin and the virtual message broker admin. The global admin is the person responsible for managing the shared messaging service. They have detailed monitoring and full control of the Solus appliance resources. For example, when provisioning a virtual message broker, they can tune the maximum spool usage or put limits on the number of subscriptions allowed within a virtual message broker. This enables them to maximize the use of their shared Solus appliance by properly partitioning resources among the virtual message brokers while still allowing these settings to be updated later without shutting down client access. The second type of user is the application team admin who needs access and control of the messaging within their application. They don't want to call up a global team each time they need to roll out a new queue, debug a connectivity issue, or update some JNDI configuration. This is where a scoped admin user works perfectly. They can be given access to monitor and configure just their specific virtual message broker. But this configuration must always stay within the bounds set by the global admin, allowing both groups to work productively and get the most out of their messaging infrastructure. To enable consolidation, you need more than just virtualization's feature support. The appliance needs great performance. Let's look at two sample scenarios. First, let's turn to a persistent messaging application requiring 2,000 messages per second, which may currently run on a single or perhaps multiple brokers, depending on the capability of the software message broker. As of recording, each Solus appliance is capable of 450,000 messages per second on ingress and as much as 1.5 million messages per second on egress under fan-out scenarios. If you're dealing with larger persistent messages, then alternatively you can look at it in terms of gigabits per second, where it can handle 5 gigabits per second on ingress or up to 30 gigabits per second egress with fanout. If you take the ingress performance with this capability, you could host over 200 persistent messaging applications on a single Solus appliance. Keep in mind that with the Solus appliance, you still get integrated HA, DR, centralized management, security, and elastic configuration. If you mostly need non-persistent messaging, then you could host over 300 virtual message brokers on a single appliance. If you're interested, you can check out the Solus YouTube channel for a video showing this great performance. For the demo, I'll keep the focus on the two different roles when managing the Solus appliance. Initially, I've set up 40 sample virtual message brokers. These are all JMS applications that are up and running. With this setup, we'll connect to the appliance as a global admin and look at monitoring virtual message brokers and the appliance as a whole. Then we'll take a sample scenario where a team has requested a new message broker. We'll walk through configuring this new virtual message broker with the appropriate resource limits and scoped admin access making it ready for the apps team. Then we'll switch roles by logging out and connecting as the application team admin to roll out our new JMS application. You'll see that as an application team you can have complete autonomy over your own messaging resources within the scope of what has been allocated to you, just like an application running within a VM with fixed resources. Okay, so here we have Soladmin, our GUI management for Solus appliances. And in keeping with the demo, we're going to take our role of a global Solus appliance admin, and we're going to log in and monitor this appliance, and then configure a new virtual message broker. So we'll add the management IP address here, and then we'll use the admin username. 
and once we log into the Souls Appliance, you can see already our global access level is at the admin level, so we have full access. And you can see that we can see all of the tabs of Soul Admin. So we have full admin access for monitoring and configuring the Souls Appliance. So we flip over to the message VPNs. It's the message VPNs that form the heart of our virtual message broker feature. And you can see that I've already got the 40 message VPNs configured that we discussed in the demo slide. And here I had already started up the background traffic and you can see that the red line indicates ingress and the blue line egress. And I have a combination of fan out and burstiness and the burstiness has some randomness. And you can see that as evidenced by the two different lines. So now taking the role of global admin, you can actually drill into an individual virtual message broker and see all sorts of properties and statistics and even message rates on a queue by queue basis which can show you which queues are receiving messages at what rate and you can easily identify queues that are receiving abnormal rates or help an individual applications team debug issues with their virtual message broker. Additionally you can see all of the endpoints for guaranteed messaging across the appliance and you can also scope your view to a particular virtual message broker. Here you can see that this virtual message broker has five queues and it has the following properties. Same thing with clients. You can see the clients scope to an individual virtual message broker or across all the appliance and you can even change this over and see some sorted statistics about clients. So now let's take our task at hand we have to deploy a new virtual message broker for a new applications team. So start the clock and here we go. So first you have to create a message VPN and give it a name. We'll call it virtual message broker app A. We'll disable authentication for the purposes of the demo. We'll enable the VPN and then really everything happens he over here in the advanced tab f in terms of global admin. So the applications team asked us for guaranteed messaging, so we have to give them some message spool. We'll give them five gigs. And for the purposes of demonstration, this application only needs a single endpoint. It's going to send and receive from a queue. So I'm going to give them the ability to create only a single endpoint inside of their virtual message broker. Just to illustrate the point that global administrators should tune all of these different limits appropriately so that they can correctly share all of the global resources of a Solus appliance among their virtual message brokers. So we'll go ahead and create that. And then we also want to enable them for, for guaranteed messaging. So we'll go and we'll configure their profile and we'll allow guaranteed messaging send and receive within this virtual message broker. Now they also need an admin user to log in so they can provision the rest of their messaging needs on their own without having to bother the global admin every time they want to change something. So we'll create them an app A admin user. We'll give it the default password and we will disable all access. Globally, they will have no access and on, by default in each VPN, they will also have no access. And we can take that user and we can add an exception. And this exception we can add, we can add for the virtual message broker that we just created. And here we can give them either read only or read write. In this case, we want the apps team to be autonomous. So we will give them read write within their virtual message broker. Okay, we're done. Stop the clock. We've now created a new virtual message broker. But for the purpose of the rest of the demo, we'll now log out and we'll log in and we'll change hats and we'll now we are the admin for this new applications team and we're going to roll out the service fully. So now our global Solus administrators have sent us our admin username and password, the management IP. So we log in. Now you can see global access none. And now you can see a lot of tabs are grayed out. These tabs represent areas where we no longer have any ability to configure. And if we try to scope ourselves, we only have the ability to see our VPN. So let's just flip over and try to connect a client. If we get our virtual message broker message VPN name wrong, then the Solon Suppliance will give us a good detailed error message saying 403 message VPN not allowed. This indicates that something is wrong. We have to contact our global admin team. In this case, we knew what's wrong, so we'll just fix it. And we'll try to connect to our fresh virtual message broker. But since nothing is configured, we've just got the default configuration from the global admin. 
then here we'll get an indication that our username is shut down because the default username in our virtual message broker is shut down. So let's go and fix our config and then we can retry our application. So for our purposes we need a queue. We'll create a queue here. We'll give access to this queue. We'll give some message spool and we'll enable this queue. And now let's say we were we go and we try to create a second queue. Again, access to this queue. Try to enable it. And now here, we're denied because we were only provisioned for a single queue in our virtual message broker. Trying to configure two is over and above the global limits that the global admin has given us. So even though we have full autonomous control of our virtual message broker, we are still scoped to whatever limits that were set by the global admin team. So that fails, but that was expected. So let's just finish our configuration. We need some JMS config because this is a JMS app, so we should enable JM JNDI. We need a connection factory. Again, we can only add, add this to our virtual message broker. In general, the defaults are good for our, the purposes of our demonstration. And then you can configure queues and topics. For our demo, we need a queue. We will give it a JNDI name of queue for app A, and we will look up the queue that we had previously configured in our virtual message broker. Select that, and there you go. So now let's go back to our application that failed previously, and let's pass some traffic. And there you go, 100 messages per second ingress and egress. And if we flip back, we can go to our virtual message broker, and we can see the statistics for this specific virtual message broker, and we can see 100 in, 100 out. If we look at our queue, we can see the same thing, egress and ingress of 100 messages per second. So that's what I wanted to show you. It's really that easy to provision a virtual message broker as the global Solus admin. And once the applications team has been given the credentials for their new virtual message broker, it's that easy to roll out a JMS service and connect a client and send traffic through the Solus appliance. To conclude, as we've seen, Solus appliances support virtualization through virtual message brokers. This enables centralized management, capacity monitoring, and troubleshooting of the messaging infrastructure while maintaining isolation of their virtual message brokers. And you get built-in support for high availability and disaster recovery. This allows you to take advantage of virtualization to achieve lower TCO through consolidation and more elastic and flexible capacity. Applications will deploy quickly and easily. And if you put all of this together, this enables messaging as a shared service in your public or private cloud. Thank you for watching this video. You can find out more information about Solus messaging appliances and their support for virtualization through this link.